parallelism policy once again okay so we will be opening up about uh, first of all we will be covering these uh, possible uh, discussion we have and uh, we'll try to cover or converse on some design issues right because whenever we discuss uh, about a particular component or a particular aspect of any system any system right uh, you need to find out some issues right uh, in, in the case of research work actually uh, these uh, issues and these challenges are often called as a research issues research questions also so that's why whenever I, I i try to start a new topic i try to start a new discussion i used to i used to try to uh, derive some issues some challenges some directions right because uh, until unless we have clear idea about these possible issues we will be facing on the design of the system uh, it is always a aimless target right so it is so that's that is the i think aptitude you should also have because we are now uh, have a discussion or having discussion with the scholars right so whenever we have this impression about scholars the scholars used to think about these possible issues these possible challenges on any concept which which is which is right uh, right on on your hand actually right so naturally uh, so those these policies are basically uh, any policy is always a challenge for any system like if you are designing a in the modern context if you are designing any information system you should be abiding by some policies so to achieve that policy right because you will be uh, having some uh, technical aspect in your system to to follow that uh, policy so that so because you are changing your system to achieve some policy like uh, in the year when uh, this government of india has introduced this symbol of rupee symbol into the financial systems uh, most of the system has been updated right just to incorporate a simple change, a simple a simple uh, you know data a simple condition from or single policy from the government that each and every system who is having this financial transaction in rupees it should have this rupee symbol on their interfaces right so there is a small change on the interfaces only this report uh, this rupee symbol is nothing to do with the internal logics but uh, on geo is actually uh, whenever you are pushing this rupees values or Indian rupees values currency, you should be uh, uh, you should be basically updating all those GUIs interfaces, right? So uh, all these policies, whenever we design a system, all these policies are part of part of the design issue, design challenge issues, right? So uh, let me um, first of all uh, share these notes. Yeah. So I, I hope it is visible to you now uh, because we have a gap of. Uh, I mean, so week gap actually last week we have started the discussion now so uh, to open the discussion uh, because see because we will be basically extending the discussion which we have started in the last class so in the previous lecture we have taken this uh, uh, internal part or internal processes or component of a crawler design right so crawler we have referred as a, a, a automated component of a set system because it should collect all the all the possible documents in the in the basically either it in the web or maybe in the some some kind of storage devices or maybe in the, your local repositories like hard drive or local systems right so it could be of any type of web source so sometimes we consider web source or information source from where the crawler will be extracting the data it could be a internet worldwide web uh, sometimes it could be a simple uh, email server also because uh, like in in many many enterprises or corporate cases, they are having their own you know email server there where they are keeping all the email communications email related data and wherever they found okay we need to perform some audit they will be exploring all the mails on the mail server right uh, or maybe for simple mail search also they will be providing some interface to search a mail or search a particular content within the mail. Similarly, we can have a local desktop uh, as a source also like uh, most of the desktop search systems are uh, exploring the or they are preparing or they are running the crawler in your desktop or in in, uh, in the desktop file system actually uh, for supporting users related search on the docs, on the desktop actually right so similar in the similar fashion in the modern uh, context actually we have a lot of pim based systems which is called uh, personal information management systems and uh, this desktop search system is one of one of the types within the PIM personal information management system, right? 
so uh, these are the things uh, basically we should be uh, connecting and we should be uh, having in our mind and uh, extension to that extension to the previous lecture uh, today we will be uh, basically covering two aspect which first aspect is along with the crawler we can we could have uh, this content or we could have this approach called feeding right feeders so so along with the crawlers also we could have a feeder services also so feeder services are nothing it is a equivalent service to the crawler but in case of feeder services you do not need to run a, a automated program because this feeding services this feeding services document feed or any feed news feed document feed all these things these services are placed on the website itself it basically it is it is the website's responsibility that we should provide a feeder and use so if you are design if you are trying to design a search system and your system search system is basically taking the inputs or taking the uh, data details or web content from a feeder services then you do not need to design a crawler you simply select that feed url of the feed or maybe website of the information of the website where this feeder is arranged you need to simply configure or customize that feed to take the data and data will be push to you right so it is like like in our case you can say you can consider this email services like gmail or all these email services these are basically kind of feeder services because uh, gmail services hotmail these mailing services or mailing uh, mailing service servers actually are pushing the mails to your uh, your uh, your login or uh, login profile they are pushing so these emailing services are pushing the data email data to your systems right so this is one kind of feeding services sometimes it is like uh, if you select for certain updates on the youtube channel or so these are kind also of uh, basically feeding services they will be pushing the data to you you do not need to maintain a crawler at your at your end right something like so it is a uh, you can say uh, it is a equivalent of crawling so you can sometimes it is said that instead of having crawler it is uh, it is better to having a feed service but uh, because if these feeding services uh, are, are basically but the privilege of websites it is it is not always possible to have a feeder for all websites right so because like you, you have observed this fact that in, in it website we are not having any feeder services so whenever you want to see the update on the street website you have to go to the website and you have to access the content something like that so after that eventually uh, you can have either crawler or you can have either uh, feeder right right something like that feeder so after getting these two things, uh, uh, crawling or feeding, uh, naturally you have ample amount of data. Uh, you will be uh, basically uh, not directly saving or storing this data into the storage devices. You need to perform some kind of conversion. So conversion, so after extracting or after uh, taking out the data from the, any web source, any web entity, you will be performing some kind of conversion before, before actually, before storing into the the storage look your your own uh, local store right so these are the two main important aspects uh, which we will be trying to complete today right as a, as a part of discussion of uh, this uh, text acquisition block right okay so basically what we have uh, basically outlined or touched upon so we will be just reminding or recalling all these facts so we have observed that okay crawler is in nothing but it is a, a automated component with the responsibility of finding the urls naturally to finding the url you need some cd urls so finding urls is the first thing which we have done under the crawler design and then uh, after getting the urls as a seed uh, the crawler program will be downloading the page content and will be separating the subsequent urls for the subsequent set of extraction and, and this this whole task will be done in the automated fashion that's one part second uh, the very close uh, analogous uh, uh, component of to the crawler is is a web browser so whenever we go to the google search system or any search system you have been observing this fact that uh, for a particular query uh, you can have list of uh, websites or list of web sources something like that right so so basically uh, you can say this uh, web browser is equivalent to web crawler naturally there will be some uh, you know computational level difference as well as the overall performance because a web browser is not giving you the data automatically naturally to store it it will be simply identifying the sources where uh, the information could be placed but in case of crawler it will be going to a particular uh, web, web source 
and extracting the content and extracting the possible set of URLs available in a particular website. So uh, if you compare the functionality, if you compare the uh, computational aspect that how a web browser, how web crawler is working, in the first impression, both are similar. But naturally, the web crawler is having a lot of work to do because it is going to support our entire system. It is going to maintain a repository right, for the later use. Similarly, so you can say uh, this, this crawler thing is a very uh, key aspect. It is a very key component for our uh, performance with respect to performance of our search system because uh, eventually it will be collecting the documents. Uh, and naturally, uh, the search system will be based on the performance of search system will be based on the collected documents, right? So collection, the document collection uh, is, is basically the bottleneck uh, of the performance of a search system. So, so basically, uh, it is very important so that it is one of the aspect we have taken in the previous class that it is very important to have an optimal level of crawling, right? Because, because uh, you could have two possible strategies that, okay, let's crawl all the possible document, all the possible data in the internet, right? But it is not always have a wise decision to crawl all the documents, crawl the all possible information in the internet, right? Because uh, eventually, if you, if you will be collecting all the possible documents, you will be uh, pushing a lot of works to be done by the other components of the system, right? So one of the component is naturally is the ranking system. So whenever you will be going to serve the user's query, naturally your uh, this ranking component, this evaluation component will be having a lot of tasks to do, tasks to perform, right? Uh, and basically, sometimes it is possible that your system is suffering with the accuracy, with the you know, recency, all the other systems. So it is, it is better, it is always a, a challenging task to achieve uh, optimal level of crawling, that how much to crawl and which resources to be crawled and to be maintained in the document store, right? So it is always a wise, uh, wise you know, a wise aspect and wise uh, decision that, okay, how much should be crawled and which record should be abandoned or discarded because eventually they will be affecting to the uh, other components of the system and naturally it will be affecting to the overall overall accuracy or overall performance or overall precision or all those matrices uh, of a such system, right? So there are various issues naturally to maintain the optimality, optimal crawling level. Uh, we will be not discussing on those aspects because it is the part of uh, very specific applications because in the upcoming lectures when we will be designing the when we will be discussing the all the components for a particular search, uh, search system, like in the later uh, in the later part of this course, we will be discussing the answer, question answering search system, uh, search system for recommender based systems. So we will be taking three four use cases, and for these three four cases, we will be discussing upon these these components that uh, for designing a recommender based system, what will be the strategy, what will be the optimality level. Uh, for crawling system also, right? So we will be taking uh, three or four main use cases to discuss how these systems are to be designed, right? So naturally for recommender system, you should be have a different type of crawling mechanism for question answering system like uh, Quora and all these things. You will be having different kind of crawling mechanism, different level of optimality in the crawling systems, right? So those things will be discussed in details. So that's why we are not taking these matrices that how basically how to balance our optimal level of crawling in the crawling uh, crawling aspect, right? Uh, in a generic way, uh, how how uh, how, uh, how a recently uh, document has been updated and how uh, recently it has been crawled, how uh, uh, this uh, search system is maintaining the recent copies of the web content. This is one of the key motivation. I'm not saying it is a key challenge. It is a key motivation. So whenever I'm saying it a motivation, it means the whole thing, like optimal level of crawling and the approach of document crawling. These all things are designed by keeping this aspect of recency, right? That any such system should have the recent version of the information, the recent copy of the document, right? So whole philosophy of crawling is, is basically designed with this uh, uh, this motivational factor that okay we should be maintaining the, the recent copies recent version of the information or data right because in the modern context if you see whenever you are maintaining the 
the old information or the aged information uh, user might be deviating to the other platforms. Your system is basically becoming absolute. So it is very critical aspect uh, to a search system that it should always retrieve or it should always extract the recent copy or recent version of the information whenever user is operating on a search or operating for us any information seeking. Right. So you need to balance between the these two aspects. These two aspects are very critical whenever we are talking about the motivation thing, age and the revisiting. So age is naturally the age of information uh, versus uh, once you observe that a certain data or certain web content is which we have in our server as a search system is aged actually. It is aged or it is, it is old. Then you have to call your crawler system to revisit the website, revisit the same website. Right, so that's what we have. We have basically uh, taken in the uh, previous class also that revisiting policy is very important because based on the age of based on the age of your source or information which we have our in our uh, systems, our data services, uh, it is very important to have a wise decision to revisit the ones. Right, and this politeness policy is one of the aspect which is affected by this revisit time. Right. So suppose uh, in the case of NIT website, uh, suppose in the NIT website has defined some time that a particular crawler or particular crawler service can revisit our website only after seven days. Seven days, right? It means you cannot visit to a particular website to crawl the information, to crawl the data from that website within the seven days, within the seven days duration. You should be, you should be approaching that, that website Source website after only after seven days, eighth or ninth or tenth, right? So it is very important because most of the websites available in the uh, internet are having their uh, this this parallelism pol this politeness policy in the politeness policy of the website. You should be defining a certain revisit time, right? For the for a particular crawler because a website server is also maintaining a list of crawlers, crawl websites or information host sites uh, which has visited that website in a duration so uh, this politeness policy is affected by or it is basically controlling this revisit time so uh, whenever we realize that our information has been aged now we have to call our component to revisit call, call our crawler component to revisit the page it should be having some balance between uh, these age and revisit time policy right so you should be so to maintain the recency of the information you should be having some balance between the age, age value of the information, each information, each data content which we have with us with the revisit crawl. So basically it is a crawler call time, right? So it is very important factor uh, because this is the key motivation of, uh, you can say the crawler program design, right? Now, uh, what are the typical, typical uh, technical challenges for a crawler? Now you can also correlate with these aspects. The first important aspect is the size of size of web, or you can say size of the web content. Web content means uh, basically uh, because in the web, the content I mean, content means the websites, the data, and all the information sources, all the uh, all the all the web entities are expanding, right? On the daily basis, or maybe on hourly basis, we are getting a lot of content pushed to these platforms, pushed to the web, pushed to the uh, any web entities. So the size of web is a real challenge for any type of crawlers, whether it is a focused, whether it is a deep web, whether it is a mobile crawler, whether it is an incremental. So any kind of crawler can be affected by the size of web or size of web entities. Because on each type of web entities, the, in the content or, or the web sources are being added, right? That is one aspect which is a key challenge or which is a typically technical challenge for us because on each web we are getting numerous information pushed to the website to the sources and each information which is coming to the site are having different type of information templates so size of template size of web is naturally is a challenge because of the information rate which is coming that is one part and the the templates which the information is being pushed right to the uh, these web entities or to the these web sources second is the web co control on the web right control on the web is typical uh, critical or typical uh, challenge because uh, 
in each of the web entities or on each website you can say web sources we are having some uh, you know control by the host that you like like in case of an IT website or maybe kind any website they are having their control on the websites they are controlling the maximum informations they're not pushing information on the websites they are having limited limited uh, exposed to the information on their websites so the control on the websites control on the web entity by the administration by the host is again a challenge right and this is basically affecting most of the deep web uh, deep web uh, related entities and most of the you know that's why we need these mobile crawlers so sometimes mobile crawler is also not able to extract the information so this con control administration control on the web entities is is also a challenging aspect to the crawler because it is the administrator of the website who is uh, having this uh, privilege on maintaining the policies also that you cannot revisit my website on daily basis you cannot revisit this, uh, your crawler on, on on my website on hourly basis so these kind of controls so basically uh, this control on web is uh, deeply or mainly affected by the policy on the websites so they are so each administrator on the website maintaining a policy maintaining a approach based on that only uh, uh, basically they are populating or they are making their information on public domain so whatever control they are having on their website is reciprocally affected to the crawler right so that is the second key challenge the third possible challenge is the non web content right because in the modern context uh, basically we are trying to design uh, multiple search systems and they will be having the information from the all possible web sources but there are some information sources there are some uh, you know data sources where these crawlers cannot uh, have their reach right and these are called uh, non web content because they are not these web sources these information sources are not directly exposed to the web not exposed to the world website where uh, a crawler can simply go and check out the information take out the data so typically uh, you can say the example are like emails uh, emails are not uh, the uh, public uh, information source uh, some documents documents which i have kept in my desktop also they are not exposed to the world websites or not exposed to the world web platforms so there are various personalized information content which is uh, which are not exposed which are not publicly available for a crawler programs but uh, yeah because in upcoming times with these information will be uh, will be part of uh, these uh, you can say the public domain crawlers also uh, because of some uh, you know upcoming technology upcoming uh, semantic wave uh, semantic based uh, crawlers also come, coming which are going to expose or going to ex uh, exploit these informations and you have been observing this fact that okay you need to modify your uh, credentials of gmail services you need to modify the login id password of all these profiles also because uh, we will be getting a lot of advanced crawlers which will be able to expose these information unintentionally right so because uh, till now we have got this impression that you need you do, you do not need to expose these non web content to the internet but in the future there will be a lot of crawlers will be designed who can exploit or expose the email information expose the documents which are kept into my system to the world web platform so naturally uh, you cannot claim that my email service or my documents which are kept in my systems are deep web they are not like that deep web is altogether different uh, entity or web entity right so uh, this non non web content uh, is is also a challenge because uh, any any uh, focused research or any mobile uh, crawler or any uh, you can say uh, the incremental or maybe topical crawler cannot exploit these data uh, these informations right so uh, basically uh, to deal with the control on the web naturally control on the web is primarily affected by these existence of deep web right because uh, deep web is basically a some site of some sort of websites of some some sort of web entities where you cannot penetrate right so uh, to con to basically this control on web is mainly contributed by the deep existence of deep web and naturally it is it is basically coming from the web web administration policies and to deal with it somehow they have designed uh, uh, they have come up with the solution 
called okay you can create uh, some kind of site map or you can exploit the site map of a website uh, to to basically uh, you know relax or uh, you can say the deal with this control aspect on the website right so site map is nothing but it is a piece of in, of information about a website uh, which will maintain the information like when the site will be updated uh, and all those things right so there are various uh, information it is it is a part of html page of websites so you can also exploit you can also explore this aspect like which is the uh, so basically all the information about site website is called site map so by by exposing or by reading to the site map aspect you can easily uh, you can easily penetrate to this control aspect control on web aspect for a crawler design right so somehow i'm not saying that by reading the site map information about the website you can directly penetrate this control penetrate the administration control on the website but somehow uh, so whenever we have this scenario of deep web it is very uh, it is very difficult scenario to to penetrate that information level so whenever you want to access the deep web website naturally you need the link of that website that is first thing you need after getting the website link you can directly access the site map of the uh, website and exploit the information maybe some part of information not whole right so whenever you face uh, you fail you face that scenario that uh, the control on the internet site is very difficult to exploit the information then you will be referring to the site map information of the website and based on that you can be exploiting some part of information for the naturally for the non web content scenario or challenge uh, you will be designing this 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 some kind of personal information for pim which is called personal information management systems and uh, so under this pim you will be having lot of uh, you can say desktop search systems you might have uh, uh, this familiarity with the a uh, lot of uh, you know google desktop search systems like like most of the systems are available nowadays uh, most of the uh, companies or vendors are providing this kind of uh, desktop search system to so you can operate on the these non web contents right so if you want to search about a particular document with the particular title you can search on these desktop search systems and all the contents which are kept in your desktop which are which are kept into your emails email uh, email or mailbox or mail profile or uh you can search uh, operate on searches so pim is something which is now established area of the research work uh related to that there is a very specific or very uh, uh, you know dedicated uh, research domain uh, which is dealing with this non web content based search or uh, to deal with this content challenge log called non web content they are having this data space systems right so uh, these data space systems are a uh, very uh, personalized or specific uh you know kind of such systems which are designed to operate on the heterogeneous kind of content so if you are suppose you are collecting the details of emails you are collecting the details of contacts and you are collecting the details of all the documents in your search system in your desktop so if you are having three different types of data right and these type these different types of data are heterogeneous they are not compatible to each other they are having different templates there are having different terminologies they are having different notions for the data storage so for email storage you have different server for contact contact details you are having different template for this uh, local desktop systems like uh, documents pdf all these things you are having different source storage notion on uh, nomenclature so to to perform a, a simple search on these three different type systems you will be designing a new new search systems and they are often referred as a data space systems right so this is a very uh, specific domain of uh, research in the computer science area right so and these are these are basically designed to by keeping the uh, focus on basically uh, non web content right so whenever you want to perform a search whenever you want to design a search system for non web content uh, either you are going for designing a desktop search systems uh, these are often referred as a vertical system vertical search system also similarly we have we could be having much uh, data space system right uh, let me correct okay so after this uh, naturally uh, we have these three challenges to deal with and uh, naturally to deal with these challenges you need to maintain uh, you know the high level of computational arrangements uh, the extended hardware setup extended 
computational uh, services also along with you right uh, but uh, right now because our focus is to design out to discuss the possible issues which uh, crawler design is facing right because size of web is basically is a challenge but while designing a crawler you can have a distributed arrangement for the crawler you can design n number of threads in a crawler that is one thing you can do to deal with the size of web then control on web this is the second issue which uh, we will be facing on our crawler design so uh, for that you need to have strategies to explore the site map part uh, but about this non web content you cannot do you cannot do actually much of things about it because these contents are not exposed to the web so it is very difficult to get a proper uh, information source to exploit these informations these data from the personalized space so if you are designing a focused web browser focused web crawler you cannot have anything to do with non web content you cannot exploit the details from your email by using a simple focus crawlers so the best way you can do you can create a mobile crawler and go send this or place this mobile crawler to the mail exchange server and get some part portion of the information right similarly if you want to uh, exploit some uh, information from my desktop you can place naturally with my permission you can place a simple mobile crawler to my desktop server so you need to install a local client of the crawler into my machine into my laptop or desktop to to basically get some information to get some meta information right so that's where the term called meta crawler so there are two terms first we have this, we have started discussing from the last lecture and there is this term called meta crawler also so so meta crawler is basically extracting the meta part only so if you are placing the crawler program into my desktop to Uh, get the information about the possible documents possible pdf possible uh, word papers and all these things any kind of documents so my system uh, will be in my file system will be giving you privilege to extract the meta part you will be able to extract the uh, basically the file name its last updated author details all these things but you will not able to uh, extract the content within these documents right so that's why in some cases uh, uh you will be using uh, this program called meta crawlers right so basically one of the crawler which we have taken in the previous lecture uh, which is called a mobile uh, crawler so mobile crawlers are often called as a meta crawlers because they can be placed to the server systems they can be placed to any remote services and they will be extracting the meta part of the information not the content right so it is designed for very specific uh, application scenarios very specific uh, purposes right so with this uh, we have uh, we have basically covered most of the aspects which we will be considering while designing a crawler now uh, along with this we have uh, there is uh, this second type of uh, approach to collect the data to collect the information which is called uh, feeds or feeder services right it is named as a document feed because naturally in the previous case in the case of crawlers we are assuming that the documents will be the source of information uh, it could be a website document or it could be a information on the website but uh, this document feeds are also it is quite similar to the crawler scenario uh, but the difference only is uh, in the second aspect where the host the website administrator will be maintaining a program will be maintaining a document feeder or feed service which will be pushing the information to the search system or a program to the search system you do not need to maintain so if you are trying to design a search system and if you are adapting the second approach you will be having some source of some information about the feeds right simply if you are designing a website to uh, collect the news information correct the political news from the country from the world uh, you will be having these feeds feed services from the few known few well known well established uh, uh, you know news websites right so you can maintain times and venia you can maintain the hindu they can maintain the washington times something like that so if you are maintaining a website or if you are having a website platform where you are populating the news articles or news documents you should be having these websites feeds these uh, uh, feed information from these websites and populating these information to your website so in this scenario we do not need to maintain any crawler program 
you can directly collect the streams, the document streams, and populate them into the platforms, right? So uh, it is basically uh, so document feeds or any kind of feed. So it could be a document feed, it could be a news feed, or it could be a video feed, any kind of thing, right? So in this scenario, it will be providing the information, providing the document information for web component on the real time basis, right? So it is, it is, it is the main difference between a crawler program, the content extracted from a con crawler, content extracted from the document feeds. So in case of document feeds. The information which will be pushed, the data which will be pushed, it will be pushed on the real time basis, right? So it is challenging also because uh, in, the, in the most of the cases where we will be using the feed services, the information is enormous. It is on the large scale. It is it is it is high in the rate basically. So it is very sometimes it is very difficult to maintain these kind of information also. But uh, the second aspect of document feeding is, is basically the information which will be coming to you, it will be coming in a specific template, a specific size, a specific uh, structure. So you do not need to bother about the further processing of these information, right? But in case of crawler, whenever you are facing a new, new website, it might be having some different template of information, different size of information, different list of URLs, all those things are involved. So you can say this document feed is more or less a systematic, it is a more organized way of collecting the information, right? So uh, basically uh, in the case of document feed or any kind of feeding services, you could, you could be having two possible options. One is called push feed, push based feed services, and another is called pull based services. So push based uh, uh, feeding services, the host, the administrator of the website, will be pushing information to you pushing information to the user or maybe to the search system that is the one type so you can typically identify that uh, okay uh, uh, this mailing so, so nowadays these all mailing services of this type only so you do not need to press the fresh refresh button if you have opened your gmail in front of you all the coming mails to the mail server are automatically pushed to your gmail inbox right but in earlier days is earlier days actually these uh, uh, emailing services are considered as a pull pull based services because uh, all the emails are basically gathered to the mail server mail exchange server and when you click on refresh button then only the mails are used to populate or to be available in your in, in basically in your uh, inboxes uh, you can if you have any relatives who are working in the industries uh, in the industry actually they are having this outlook based email services email ex uh, exchange server in the case of outlook based email services these emailing services are still pull based mechanism pull feed pull pull based pull feeding based services uh, there you need to press the refresh button then only uh, any new mail will be popping up on the screen but in the case of gmail all these private services gmail hotmail or gmail all these things they are now becoming a pushed feed where uh, this mail server or where the sender mail services uh, services are pushing all the mails to your systems right uh, so basically in, in these kind of feeding services you could have two possible approach one approach could be could be a push based feeding and second could be pull based services right uh, so basically uh, feeding is basically a, one of the simplest way of getting the information but it is but as a website designer as a website administrator it is very difficult to design a web feeder, document feeder. And it is always uh, basically, uh, you know, this decision uh, that whether I need to place a feeder service on website or not, it is always with the website designer or website administrator. So in the internet, if you go, we will be getting only less than zero, less than 0.02% uh, of websites are having these document feed services because uh, and because if you are putting the web feed services naturally the advantage that you will be not getting any extra traffic on your website you will because you are pushing all the information to the world so no crawler will be coming to a website and placing this this information extraction component on a website so naturally your traffic your websites will be traffic free they will not be having any congestion on website but it is always having this difficulty to design document feeds and this decision whether to have or not a document feed on your website is always relying with the uh, website administrator, right? So 
naturally to get the information to get the text from the web we have these two alternatives feeder and crawler mechanisms now after getting the information from these two alternate approach d through d contradict no contradictory they are somewhat uh, analogous so getting uh, these content uh, from the web uh, the the last step is is to basically prepare these uh, collected information collected uh, web content and keep these things or maybe prepare these things in a form that could be adaptable to a storage device because eventually we will be having one type of storage devices physically stored devices and you have to map you have to convert or transform or prepare your data collected data into that compatible format right so for that uh, to prepare the collected component in a compatible format with compatible format which we have in our storage devices you will be going through some 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 steps of conversion you can say content conversion right so content conversion are, are basically uh, basically uh, is a typical required process right so it will be in the in the modern context also it will be primarily based on either some schemes of encoding schemes uh, you must have uh, uh, basically familiarity with some kind of encoding schemes during so during uh, your uh, uh, you know graduation days graduation uh, degree also you might have uh, uh, gone through some of the encoding schemes also right so in the most of the cases these uh, modern uh, search systems are are still using those encoding schemes to convert a uh, web content into the compatible fashion uh, but in some cases they are having these their own conversion tool like like uh, facebook twitter so these these social media platforms are having their own conversion tool all the contents which are extracted is gone through these conversion tools and uh, they will be mapping converting these collected information collected data uh, right with respect to the uh, their storage uh, capacity or storage structure right so there are two specific problems which we will be facing while maintaining the uh, the pages uh, the content which we have collected one is called uh, the updated pages so naturally this is the phenomena uh, which will be occurring in in very frequent fashion because most of the web content most of the web pages are uh, basically getting updated frequently or maybe some periodic time basis so it is very important to maintain the updated copy of the page and it is very uh, interesting to uh, always have this comparison that okay uh, now we have this new 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 content or updated version of the page so how to maintain this this uh, you know enlisting that okay the the previous page is there now we have to replace a previous page with the new updated page so for that you need to maintain a big table kind of arrangement so it is a, a hash table or it is a table to maintain the uh, enlisting or the detail about the versions of the page versions of a certain web page right so you need to have this big, big table i big table or big hash table type of arrangement which can maintain or which maintains the all versions all the versions which we have of a certain web page with us in our crawler program right so you need to maintain a big page big table arrangement big hash table arrangement similar to that there is a, another challenge which is to maintain the or to identify the duplicate page content so why because you need to extract all the pages and while or just before storing these pages just before converging the pages you need to have some strategy to identify that this page is exact copy it is a duplicate page right so to identify this to establish that a page is a duplicate uh, either we go we can go for a traditional approach of uh, check summing approaches to to basically identify the two pages as a duplicate page uh, or maybe we can go for a n-gram approach, n-gram based approach, which is often called as a fingerprint approach to identify the duplicate page, right? So whenever we have collected various pages from the internet and we realize, okay, we need to perform some kind of duplication or a, a detection of duplication approach uh, on these pages, you should be uh, selecting one of the strategy that is we check some or it is be fingerprinting or n-gram approach. So these two are the uh, basically identified as the prominently used approaches to identify the duplicate 
pages on the extraction or before storing to the storage. So after performing these three uh, sub steps in the conversion process, so for uh, conversion process, we will be having these three sub steps, right? First step is naturally encoding scheme after encoding to the compatible format, after converting into the compatible format, we will be maintaining uh, this big hash table, big table arrangement, which will be uh, serving this purpose of basically maintaining the latest version, maintaining the all list of all version. Then we will be identifying whether a page is duplicate or not. For that, we'll be going for checksum or fingerprint. And at last, naturally, uh, we will be storing uh, the prepared data or prepared content in the suitable storage right uh, and this this we have referred as a document data store is in, in the block diagram of such system and for that either you can go for a traditional database systems like structured database systems relational database system or you can go for the modern storage system which are often called non is non not basically unstructured based systems and these are uh, called often right, like NoSQL based data, uh, MongoDB and all those things. So you can have these modern or uh, non-traditional storage uh, uh, hardware actually to store the extracted and prepared data, right? So with this, uh, we are now uh, done with the discussion on the, um, this the very first building block of the search system, which we are seeing as a uh, crawler or, or the document feeder. And naturally, these two processes, these last process, conversion and storage, is applicable to both, right? It is applicable to crawler as well as document feeder, right? But in the first place, in the first place, you could have this option to select a uh, crawler-based approach or document feeder-based approach. But in the second phase, on the second step, we should be having this these sub steps to perform, right? Conversion uh, and storage arrangement. So with this, uh, we can now summarize or we can now realize that naturally uh, whenever we will be designing, now we will be designing the system, crawler system, uh, or maybe any design system, we will be having these following maybe challenges you can see, or maybe the technical aspect we will be facing. So naturally freshness of the pages is, is the challenge. That's what we have taken that you need to, you need to design uh, your product program to keep the the fresh or the latest as the most updated content on a uh, on the search system that is the responsibility of crawler program also then uh, we will be having this difficulty of uh, basically maintaining or detecting the duplicate pages on the uh, on the basically uh, storage device uh, naturally along with it uh, because uh, web scaling is an issue so naturally your crawler program should be also having some scalability Right, because the scalability of a crawler program is proportional to the scale of the web content. Because now you can, so if you are having a crawler program with 10 threads, it can exploit 10 websites or 10 resources. And when a web is expanding, you also need to tend to uh, increase the capacity of your crawler program. So you should be extending the crawler architecture also. So when I am saying, I am saying uh, the Crawler of architecture, it means it is also extending the computational machines, computational device, and the bandwidth which is supporting to the crawler program. So you need to scale all the resources, all the computing resources. That's why it is said as a it is should be it should be scaling up the crawler's architecture. Uh, uh, related to this factor only, scalability factor only, you need to prepare your uh, crawler program to be in the distributed fashion. Right, distributed fashion means you need to have multiple threads of your crawler, and these crawler programs, crawler threads should be distributed in the different web content. You should not like that all the uh, all the crawler threads are working upon a single or limited set of uh, websites. Right, this should be in the distributed fashion. So for that, you need to maintain some kind of distributed computing uh, algorithms. Right, uh, then we have uh, basically this tendency to maintain the unbiased quality on the web content. That's what I am saying that whenever we are having multiple threads of a product program, it should go to the diverse sets of website, diverse sets of web sources. It should not converge to the one set of web pages or one set of URLs. It should be uh, divergent in nature, right? Extendable is then naturally is a non-functional requirement again, uh, because uh, that this web uh, 
because web is web content or web sources are expanding they are having different content on daily basis and these contents are of different types different structures different semantics so to deal with this aspect your crawler program should be extendable it should accept all the formats of the data new formats of the data right so these are the few basically uh, issues uh, uh, this, uh, which uh, has been observed in the literature also. So to deal with it, uh, to deal with certain uh, challenge, uh, you can have either modification in the existing crawler, or you can design your your own crawler program to deal with these issue, or maybe one or two issue, right? So uh, with this, uh, I'm closing uh, this discussion. If you have anything to raise, uh, you can ask me right now or you can uh, because we are getting a uh, little 